So uh, let's have an example for a boundary value problem, which is derived from a real physical model. Okay. An example of BVP. So how to derive from a physical model or what kind of physical model can derive a BVP problem? Um, you know, the, this is a, a very interesting problem. So uh, back in times, uh, people tends to like to live near the riverside. Um, one reason is that when you're near the river, you can start to do the trade with the boat. And usually back in uh, very old time, there is no flight, there is no bus. So when you are trying to ship your goods to trade, uh, it's usually the ship. So there is shape usually for trade trading the goods um, and there is your warehouse um, near the river warehouse near the river and near your warehouse will be your own home okay your house and the bike will be some mountain okay with the height h here um, that is a good case, but when you're near the river, you also increase your chance to be attacked by some bad boats. So if this boat, instead of treating the goods, they are trying to steal your stuff with the flag, you know, it can be like this. Okay. With this cross sign, so that you know this is not good. Both they are now trying to trade with you. They are trying to steal your stuff. They are trying to rob your home, your hometown. The I that sense usually to protect your own home. There is a kind of set up to protect your house, protect your town, protect your warehouse, and there is a kind of ball about. Uh, shoot trying to shoot the boat right trying to shoot the boat the lines will be around um l you know based on your eye vision so in that sense uh luckily hopefully you shoot the cannonball with that speed with the cannonball's own properties it can attack this uh ship and protect your hometown so that is one of the class classic BVP problem. And let's see how it can derive to the BVP, okay? So for the cannonball, okay? For the cannonball, it has two forces. One is its own gravity. The other is the air resistance, okay, after it's shoot. So the night force of the cannonball will be MA. And that is constructed by both the gravity and the, as well as some resistance of your air uh, based on the speed. So it will be mg at z direction, right? The gravity will be at z direction minus uh, gamma uh, for this cannonball, which is the air resistance coefficient times the velocity and this velocity will be at both x and z direction so x direction is horizontal z direction will be the uh, perpendicular um so this is the net force for the cannonball well um you can also get what is u uh um so this is the resistance times m m is the cannonball's um mass then you can get the acceleration will be equals to negative g, which is the gravity at z direction, minus gamma v x z direction. So the gamma is the coefficient of the air resistance of that ball. And um, you also know this a is dv over dt, right? So that is the uh, resist, uh, acceleration, which is the differentiate of uh, the change of the uh, velocity as function of time. Then uh, you can write uh, four uh, differential equations associated with this uh, system. 
uh, with this cannonball. So there is V over dt. Uh, you can see dx over dt. That will be equals to uvx. So the cannonball at x direction, what is the velocity? Uh, you can have dz over dt will be dz. That is the cannonball at z direction, um, the perpendicular one. You can also have dvx over dz. And when you have dvx over dz, you can see from this equations, the dvx will be the negative gamma vx, okay? So that is dvx over dz. This is only for the z direction. And if you can decompose that uh, x and z direction for the velocity, that will be negative uh, gamma vx. Then we also can have dvz over dt. That will be minus g at z direction minus gamma vz. Okay, so you can get four differential equations regarding this cannonball in this system after it shoot. Okay, then let's try to define the initial value, like how many initial value we can define and how many boundary value we can define. So define the conditions, known condition. So for the known conditions, it's easier to know for the initial one, this cannonball at the initial position, because we know it fixed with this cannon here, okay? So it's fixed with this cannon here. So we know this V, oh, sorry, X, at t equals to zero, when the cannonball is now shoot, it stay at the initial place. That will be l. Oh, sorry, zero. We refer here will be zero. So at the initial location will be zero. Okay, and we also know z at t equals to zero. The height will be h, right? But do you know v x? T equals to zero and VZ T equals to zero. You don't know. You don't know how strong you need to shoot the cannonball in order to hit this boat. We are trying to know how much the power we need to input to shoot that cannonball, right? So we don't know that. What is the initial um, VX and VZ? Okay. But um, but what we know, but what we know for the boundary conditions, we know at the final time, we know at the final time, we want to shoot this shape, right? So we know that the x t equals to t final, it will be this L. So we want to shoot this boat. And uh, we also know at z, the final time, we want to shoot this shape then the z will be at zero. Basically, it's located to this shape. And you can see that we have this boundary conditions defined when you have x and z, you have zero and h. Uh, when you have the t final, where you know where is the, uh, hopefully, that cannonball is located at the boat where that x direction will be l, z direction will be zero. But here is the problem, but we don't know what is our T final. So we don't know what is our T final. We, we even don't know what is the power we need to input for our cannonball, how we can know what is the T final. So we don't know what is the T final. So it's really hard to define this for boundary conditions if, if you know you even don't know what is the point you are trying to define there. Then let's change another variable. Instead of using time, what we can use, we can use coordination to define our cannonball that for um, uh, conditions. Okay, so let's change our independent variable, independent 
variables. So before what we have is d over dt, xz, vx, vz, that is equal to 2, vx, vz, negative gamma vx, negative z, uh, uh, minus gamma vz. So that is when our independent variable is time. Then let's change to the independent variable is x. Okay. So we can say this is dy over dt. That is equals to this whole four uh, differential equations. Um, if we want to change our independent variable to x from t, then what we can do is dy over dx. Okay, let's change our independent variable to x. That will be equals to dy over um, dt, dt over dx. So that you can change that back to dy over dx. Then what is dt over dx? What is dx over dt? That is vx. So dy over dt times one over vx. That is the relationship between the dy over dx and dy over dt. Then we can just change this uh, uh, matrices into dy over dx, just to change our independent variable. So dy over dx will be equals to dy over dt times 1 over vx. That will be equals to 1 over vx times vx will be 1. Well, uh, 1 over vx times vz will be vz over vx. Then this part will be um, gamma. And then it will be negative z g over vx minus gamma vz over vx. So now we shift everything instead of the time because we don't know what is the final time. We couldn't define our boundary conditions. Change to the coordination where we know initial positions and we also know the final positions, okay? So let's change our independent variable to x and we get this differential equations. And this differential equations is basically represent d over dx, x, z, vx, vz. That is equal to 1 vz over vx, negative gamma minus g over vx minus gamma vz over vx. Then let's see if we can find the boundary conditions for this cannonball. Okay. Uh, dx over dx equals to one. That is not uh, interesting um, differential equations. So we can change to d over dx, z vx vz equals to vz over vx negative gamma minus g over vx minus gamma vz over vx, okay? So let's see if we can find three conditions here to solve our uh, differential equations, like th three first order differential equations. Let's see if we can find the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions where we need, uh, we can find for example, z at initial, x equals to zero. So when x equals to zero, that is the initial location when the cannonball is still inside the cannon and that is uh, at the top of the mountain. So that is h. We also know the final of the cannonball when x equals to l. The final value be equals to zero. So we get two conditions already. We also know that when Vx x equals to zero squared plus Vz x equals to zero squared. That is basically the initial 
um, speed you need to input into the cannonball, and that is uh, uh, proper, uh, proportional to the power of the cannonball. So you also know that what is this uh, um, uh, Vx squared plus Vz squared equals to V0 squared. Now we have three conditions. And these three conditions are passing two different points. So this is VVP. And we have three conditions and we are trying to solve this three first order ODEs. Then we can solve it, okay?